Hello and welcome everybody to another edition of WNBL ITV. Please do not adjust your computer screens wherever you're watching this. Yes, that is a very, very rude moustache that I'm wearing. And one person who is very scared of it is Laurie Chiswick, my co-host. Laurie, welcome back. Well, Darren, I wasn't sure. I was going to ask what do I actually call that um, <laughs> on your face. But you know what, Darren, today we don't have a lot of time for pleasantries in this opener because we have got so much to get through. We do, but let me just remind everyone that I am wearing this horrible, horrible moustache for a very good cause. It is Movember. It's all about promoting awareness of men's health issues, in particular in relation to prostate cancer and depression. So please, I'm going to be tweeting out some information about uh, how to sponsor people, but also just start a conversation with somebody you love. It's a fantastic cause, I think. Well, it is, Darren, and, and it is a good excuse for you, but uh, you know what? Can't wait till the end of November. <laughs> <laughs> it's Movember, Laurie. It's Movember. All right, let's get straight into the show. Of course, a little bit later on in the show, we're going to be previewing what's coming up in round six of WNBL action. We're also going to have a great chat with Jenna O'Hay, as well as all the news updates from Catherine Murphy. But before we get into any of that, um, we should remind everyone about our social media details. And of course, Laurie, our Facebook and Twitter page, you've been there just tweeting away and getting all sorts of feedback from people. Well, you know what, that, that Twitter, I, I was a little bit lax in it this week, but the viewers are continuing to send in questions, so it's, it's really great. All right, make sure you keep in contact with us. This is your show as much as it is ours. Let's have a look back at what happened in round five, and we're going to start with our, w, with our ABC TV Game of the Week, Laurie. It was over in Perth, and the West Coast Waves were taking on the Townsville Fire, and it had been a really interesting week for the Waves. Their coach, they had some basically crisis meetings, and their coach, David Herbert, put down his foot and said, you know what, girls, if you're not fit enough, if you're not playing at a WNBL standard, you're not going to play with this team. You're right, Darren. It was quite an extraordinary move, but uh, to suspend some players for their for lack of fitness, what it did was actually open the door for some other players to, to show their skills and, and on national TV. And to be honest, I was surprised at the closeness of the game. Yeah, so were we over there watching it. It was only eight points at half time was Townsville's lead. They came into the game, of course, undefeated. West Coast on the other side of the coin. Um, and they were right in it. A couple of big baskets to Jess Foley just before half time got the margin to eight. But unfortunately, as we see with young teams so often, the Waves just couldn't continue that momentum in the second half. They couldn't, um, Darren. But one of the things I was impressed with was their endeavour to try and get steals, deflections, and yep. just be overall disruptive. You know, you have great shooters like Jess Foley, so you're not going to sh stop her, and she was in fine form. And uh, Dowdell, uh, you know, those players are quality players, but for a team that's got a lot of inexperience, they did a fantastic job. They really did, and I think there's great hope for the future with the Waves as well. They were able to blood some of those young players, as you said, give them the experience, and we'll see how they develop over the next few weeks. And Darren, whilst they didn't get a, a W in the uh, uh, win column, what they did get was that record uh, for the Mexican Waves, so congratulations to all those West Coast fans. <laughs> yeah, that was, it was an exciting moment there for the Waves fans over there. All right, other games in round five, and the AIS played the Logan Thunder, and unfortunately for the AIS, they continue to be winless. The Logan Thunder had a pretty good spread of scorers right throughout this game, as we would expect, and recorded a very comfortable victory. Also in Canberra over the weekend, the Canberra Capitals were defeated by the Dandenong Rangers. Laurie, it was a 12-point margin to the Rangers. It was close at times, but the Rangers just proved too strong in the end. Well, both teams would have been seething from their losses the week before, and, and the pressure is mounting on both of them. But, you know, under the guidance of Kath McLeod, who had an exceptional game, Danny Nong were just able to grind it out and probably played better basketball over four quarters. They did. Krista Phillips was really good again for the Danny Nong Rangers, their import centre, and the Capitals just going through a few shooting slumps. The Sydney Uni Flames played the AIS and comfortably accounted for them for the second time this season. Laurie, it was close though. The, the AIS were actually level with the Flames at half time, and Karen Dalton couldn't give her stars much of a rest. Well, I know, I looked at that, and they did play some big minutes, yeah. but what I really liked was uh, Carly Mitrovic's game for the Institute. It was a career-high 21 points and 9 rebounds against quality opponents. Yeah, it was a, certainly a great performance for her. Up in Bendigo, it was the 100th match for the Spirit in their franchise's very sh relatively short history, but they came up short against the determined Adelaide Lightning side. The margin of 9 points perhaps flattered the Spirit in the end, Laurie, and some pretty hard-hitting comments from their coach, Bernie Harrow, during the week. Well, we know, Darren, they were with Without Christy Hare were yes. their leader and I just think that made a massive difference. All of a sudden their team chemistry just wasn't quite there. They didn't have as many assists as they normally have. That um, you know they're, they're known for that execution of their offense and, and that probably went a little bit astray. Certainly Deanna Smith knocked in 27 points 
But she had to take 17 shots to, to yeah. do that. So, you know, they needed probably a little bit more of a spread. Yeah, so a big weekend coming up for the Spirit as they try and rebound this week. Again at home, it'll be against the Canberra Capitals. We'll have the details of that coming up in a moment. But the final game of the weekend was the Bulleen Boomers hosting the Adelaide Lightning, Laurie. And I know you were there watching the game. Um, were the Lightning a bit fatigued? Well, one, they were a little bit. But mainly, I tell you what, Bulleen's defence, compared yeah. to the week before, they just upped it a notch completely. They were so aggressive in there, bumping the cutters, not letting Adelaide get position, switching aggressively. And you know, Susie Batkovich and Abby Bishop are running the lanes and every single time they're getting bumped. Mm. And they would have been bumped the day before with Gab Richards and Jasmine. So by the fourth quarter, certainly, certainly fatigue played a major role. Yeah, and they were, they were kept to just 33 points in the opening three quarters, a team that previously had had the league's best offense. So that was a remarkable performance from Tom Mars' side. Let's have a look at the ladder and Tom Mars team does sit there in third spot. They haven't played as many games as everybody else, but Laurie, what this does do is set up a thrilling week coming up, doesn't it? Well, Darren, I want everybody to have a close look at that ladder because as of next week, one of those top two teams is not going to have a zero in the win law in the loss column. And if you look at the bottom, one of either West Coast or AIS is going to have a win in their, in that column. Yeah, exciting times for those two teams. All right, it's time for us to take a short break. And Laurie, in fact, you're being subbed out. We're gonna, I you know, can go I and have a sit on I the can't sidelines. Believe that. <laughs> <laughs> this studio is not the biggest, not big enough for both you and Jenna O'Hay, who will be my special guest in a few moments' time. But before we get to Jenna, let's have a chat to some of the Adelaide Lightning girls with their classic interviewer, Susie Bakovich. Hi, you're watching WNBL ITV. I'm Susie Bakovic and I'm from the Adelaide Lightning. Today we're going to ask a few questions uh, from my teammates. First of all, we have Abby Bishop. Say hi to the camera. Hi, guys. Um, first of all, I'd like to know, I uh, saw your wrist um, was a bit taped the last two games. What happened? I actually think I fell on it, but um, from what you've said to Bucks, I think the whole team thinks there's a few other issues with the old wrist. But yes, I just <laughs> fell on it. So Just use your imagination. I don't think you have to use it too far. <laughs> all right, next. Okay, next of all, we have Amy. Bit of dirt on the team here. Who do you reckon's the worst singer? Ooh, I don't know. I mean, our van is fairly quiet, but... Um, oh. Kelsey is putting her hand up, so I'll go with Kelsey. Into the microphone. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder oh, what you are. Up above the world. <laughs> All right, we're not going to make it in the top five, but a good try, Kelsey, good try. Who do you reckon uh, can cook some good poached eggs in our team? Oh, my God, that's me. So the <laughs> trick is what I've been watching from Lifestyle Cooking 117 on Offstar is oh. that you have to put some glad wrap around the poached egg and then you drop it in some boiling water. And then when you get it out, it stays perfect. Next we have Joey Hill. Just wait. She's got to get in a wheelchair to get here. <laughs> oh, hang on, yeah, she's coming. Here we go. You're right, Joey. <laughs> bit parched now. Do you need a bit of a drink oh. of water? Yeah, please. That's what I Joey, let us know, um, mate, there's all these crack jokes about you being old in the wheelchair, but mate, you still get up the floor more than, quicker than anybody else in uh, the league. What's your trick? They call me Benjamin Button. <gasps> Benjamin Button. <laughs> Lucky last we have um, chicken legs. I mean, Tony Edmondson, come on down. Her knees don't touch, and I walked into the change room next minute, I see Screeny doing these ones. <laughs> what are you doing? Trying to get your knees together, is that what happened? Oh, it's something like that, I don't know. You could take it in many different ways, I suppose, how you walked in. It's just a little bit of, little bit awkward, and I think it's mildly offensive that it's been brought up on ITV. Well, be I took it as your knees don't touch, and Screeny wanted to prove they could touch. Oh. Rachel, yeah, the famous um, bird nest hairdo. Mm -hmm. Now, do we have to put a lot of work into that to get it looking so perky and high up there? Well, you just have to wash it and sleep on it, no by dry nothing, and just... Demonstration. Yeah, demonstration. Just so we've got the eggs, now we've got the hair. Yeah. I don't think there's any, the singing, we, we've covered every basis. So it just goes like so, you just, all you do, hands, hand tie, just pop it up like so, grab it, two double, and there you go. That's pretty good. Thanks for having us. Um, clearly won't make it far on uh, commentating or questionnairing, if that's even a word. <laughs> See you guys. Uh, yes, well, welcome back to WBLI-TV. I'm in the host studio again with uh, actually a very special guest, Jenna O'Hay. But 
Jenna, I don't know how we follow that up with Susie just making up words. Uh... She was making up words at the end there. That was a very interesting interview. Now, I don't know, have you got have you got an iPhone? Do you play words with friends? I do. I think it's one of the stupidest games that's ever been invented. People just making up words left, right and centre. Uh, I'm going to try and play questionnaireing next time. <laughs> See if it works. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I'm not sure if it's possible. But... Yeah, well, uh, Anna Crossfight last year I used to play with her and she used to get really angry. She's a school teacher. And I would just, you know, you try and get yeah. it whatever word you can and she would always get really angry at me whenever some random word I'd make up that would work. Yep, good. Well, I think the other thing we need to think about there is you don't want Anna Crosswhite getting angry. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> now, uh, thank you very much for coming in. It's great to have a chat. Um, I understand you've missed out on training to be here. That's, uh, that's a big moment in your, in your career. Be one of the first sessions you missed. <laughs> yeah, I have missed out on tonight's session. Um, Mark isn't too pleased to tell you the truth. We've got a big weekend coming up. So it would have been good to be there, but it's good to be here as well. Well, how are you feeling now? Um, back in the green and gold of the Danny Long Rangers, uh, it's obvious that the team's quite different to the last time you were there. What, what's the season been like so far? It's been great. Um, all the girls, we all get along so well, and the chemistry is really starting to build on the court. Um, you know, we lost a couple of close games, but I think um, as the season goes on, we're going to just keep continuing to build and it's going to be really exciting. Well, I've got to ask you about the Boleyn game. Um, it was our match of the week a couple of weeks ago. You'd... Do I have to go through it? 13 points up at three-quarter time. Uh, what happened in the last quarter? We, we weren't quite sure what happened in the last quarter, really. It is a very good question <laughs> that I think we all would like to know the answer to. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, they scored too many points in the, first quarter, uh, in the last quarter. I think the first three quarters, we held them to... A very reasonable score yeah. and I thought our defence was really great and then that last quarter, you know, we I think we let ourselves down and that put pressure on the offensive end and yeah. um, we got a bit tense and we all unravelled. Yeah, which is a shame. But you do get the chance to, to get one back this weekend. You've got Boleyn on Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening at the Benedo Club at 6 o'clock. Um, but before that, you've got to go to Adelaide. The uh, schedules haven't done you any favours this week, have they? It's a tough weekend, yeah. um, but it's only going to make us stronger and um, I'm looking forward to it. How do you approach a weekend like this? I mean, obviously, you know, you're coming up against two of the best performed teams in the competition so far. I mean, how, how tough is that as a, as a mental and physical challenge? Very. Yeah. Um, you know, it's hard to concentrate. Um, you know, you have to take one game at a time. So we've got to concentrate this week on Adelaide and get our scout for them correct. And um, then we fly back straight after the game yeah. um, on Saturday and then we've got the game on Sunday evening. So it's going to be a really tough weekend. But, um, you know, I think we're up to the challenge. How hard is it to not be distracted by that second game, particularly when it's, uh, it's against such a traditional rival like the Boomers? And especially after the loss that we had last yeah, weekend, yeah. It, um, there's a lot more riding on it. We need to try and get head to head on them. Um, you know, this season is so close this year. There's just so many good teams yeah. and so many good rosters. So um, we need to get head, the head to head on as many teams as we can. So. Yeah, it's going to be quite hard to stay focused, I think. Yeah, well, if we've got time, we'll ask you a little bit more about the season as a, as a, as a broader concept. But what I want to ask you is about Boleyn. I mean, how was it playing against them? Uh, obviously, you know, the championship last year and the year before, the heartache and all that, but you, you were really a part of the fabric of that club. But now, uh, no longer. Was it, was it an interesting experience coming up against them? Um, yes and no. Yeah. I think it was more comforting for me to be on the Daniel home court first off. I think it's going to be quite difficult for me to walk back into the Veneto Club on Sunday. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's only four girls uh, left on the team. Yeah. So it's a very different roster. So I don't, yeah, I didn't, it's just a game. Once yeah. you get out on court, it's all or nothing. And, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next two games we play against them. They're going to be great challenges. And, of course, you're still able to fraternise with people uh, off the court. And I saw you and Liz at Oaks Day. Was it just Oaks Day that you made it to, or did you go to a few others as well? No, I just went to Oaks Day. Yeah, had right. a really great day there. But, yeah, I catch up with the girls all the time. Yeah. Um, you know, Alice and I go out for brunch, and I'm catching up with all the retired girls tomorrow night for dinner. So, yeah. you know, we'll always have that championship together. But, you know, you move on and trying to get the championship with Danny Nong now. Uh, no grilled hamburgers with Alice. I think her and Liz tweet it regularly about their grilled hamburgers, pre-match meals. No, I'm not a grilled person. <laughs> okay. We're more of poached eggs for breakfast kind of girls. Uh, like, the girl, like Angela Marina. Yeah, she'll have yeah. to cook me some one day. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about your American experience? Uh, how was it living in LA and, and playing in that competition? LA is awesome. Yeah. I just had the best time. Um, you know, it was summer over there yeah. in LA, by the pool, yeah. by the beach. It was pretty good. And then just the basketball as well is 
the best standard. Yeah. Um, you know, you're training and playing against the best girls in the world. So I had a really great time. And what, what was the biggest highlight? Was it on or off the court? And if, if you can think of it, what was it? Um, the first time walking out into the Staples Centre, yeah. um, you know, getting subbed on for that first game against Minnesota. Um, we came from behind and won that game. Um, and I think that'll always stick in my head. The Staples Centre is an amazing arena to play in. Yeah, fantastic. Well, and of course, Kobe Bryant's been there for so long, and I think, understand, his father was your coach as well. He was, yeah. he was. Jelly Bean Bryant was our coach, <laughs> so I learned a lot of him. And I've, we've, got to, we've got to wrap this up. We have to get to Catherine at the news desk, but did you actually meet Kobe? And no, no because of the lockout. He oh, wasn't around. Course, he was yes. on vacation. I was spewing. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe next year. Maybe. maybe next year. <laughs> Jenna, thank you so much for coming in and having a chat to us. No uh, worries. First time, hopefully it won't be the last. Um, Best of luck for the rest of the season, but in particular this weekend, we'll see you at the Veneto Club on Sunday. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Jenna O'Hay there. Fantastic start of the year for her and the Dandenong Rangers, and certainly more to come without a shadow of a doubt. Now it's time to join Catherine Murphy over at the news desk. Thank you for that, guys, and Jenna, it is lovely to have you in the studio. Well, we start with the Player of the Week, and Dandenong's Kathleen McLeod has received this week's award after she scored... 25 points in the Rangers win over the Canberra Capitals at the weekend. It was also a big weekend for Kelly Wilson. She played her 200th game. Unfortunately for Kelly though, she couldn't celebrate it with a win at Bendigo. They of course went down to Adelaide. And finally, let's face it, it would not be a WNBL news update if I didn't feature an update from Liz Cambage's Twitter account. Now there's good news and bad news. We'll start with the bad news. She's actually been diagnosed with glandular fever, but the good news is she didn't even know she had it. She's actually at the back end and shouldn't have too long to recover. So with the way she's been playing, guys, I can't even imagine how good she's going to be when she shakes it off. Back to you. Well, thank you very much to Catherine Murphy at the news desk. And Laurie, you've rejoined me. That's some big news about Liz, isn't it? Glandular fever, that's, um, you know, that, that is a surprise. And we've already heard earlier in a couple of episodes earlier, Gretel Tippett had uh, glandular fever and actually had to remove herself. Yep. So let's hope Liz uh, is at the tail end of it. Yeah, let's hope so. She can make a speedy recovery. All right, let's get to the games now for round six. And we're going to start off with the match between the two winless sides, the AIS taking on the West Coast Waves. And Laurie, last year they split their matchups, one win apiece. Um, it's tough to pick a winner here. Well, unless West Coast get those players back from suspension, and I'm not sure how long they were suspended, I think if they do, that might just spark that team to really pull together and get the W. If they don't, I'm going to go with AIS. All right, they're playing at home, of course. Also playing at home with the Bendigo Spirit, and they're hosting the Canberra Capitals. This is our ABC TV match for broadcast this weekend. Really looking forward to this. This is a crunch game. Well, it is, and, and the more both teams lose, especially Canberra with only one win... The pressure mounts yep. and, you know, you, whilst you try and approach the game the same way, just some things can creep into your game and it's a real challenge for a coach to keep the players calm and that's exactly what Kerry Graff is going to have to do. Kerry Graff will, but so will Bernie Harrower. Yep. Bernie's team has had a very tough start, start to the season. They're two wins and four losses, but they've been away to Townsville, Logan, Sydney and Boleyn. And now here they are against the desperate capital side. I wonder if maybe this might be the game where we see some of their best work. Well, it is, and I certainly hope that Christy Harrower is back mm. on the court because she makes a huge difference. She's the general. She runs everything. She'll match up against Nicole Hunt, who is having a, a very, very good season. So they really need her on the court. Yeah, they do, and she is still a query, though. There's yeah. a quote today where she might still be a couple of weeks away. We hope it's not that serious, but yeah. Christy, get well soon. <laughs> Adelaide, The Adelaide Lightning hosts the Dandenong Rangers, as we just heard Jenna O'Hay talking about. This is the start of a very tough road trip for the Rangers. Well, it is, and, and both teams, you know, we, we just say it every sort of game is, is they're going to be desperate to win. Yep. Adelaide are at home. They would have been glad to split that weekend uh, against Bendigo and Boleyn. But again, Danny Nong sort of creeping up the ladder. Mm. Adelaide's really going to want to get on top of them. Clearly, again, Adelaide's advantage is in the bigs with Susie and Abby yeah. Bishop going up against Krista Phillips, who's impressed us. But that second power spot up front is, is a bit of a worry for the Rangers. But then... 
They've got Jenna and, uh, and Kathleen McLeod doing their business in the backcourt, which makes them so tough. Well, and, and, and certainly Kathleen coming off that great game, yep. and, and she's continuing to have a good season. And, and Jenna just seems really determined to want to get that uh, things done with the Rangers. What about the matchup up north? The Town Townsville Fire taking on the Sydney Uni Flames, the two teams who are undefeated. Laurie, interested in your analysis. When I look at this, I look at the consummate team in Townsville. They really are a relatively even group of players versus a side in Sydney who rely on their three big stars, Snell, Poto um, and, of course, Amy Denson to, to get most of the work done. Well, I, um, I spoke with Rachel Flanagan. I thought, you know, go to the skipper of the team and, mm. and she's having a great season and see what she has to say. And, and she's, of course, they're really in, looking forward to the game. They don't feel they've been tested as yeah. much because they've, their wins have come against teams lower on the ladder. Um, but she feels they have an edge in that Sydney have to travel. Yes. They go to Townsville. We know it's really hard to win. They've got that wonderful new venue. They're packing it out over a thousand people. Uh, so they've got their home crowd behind them. And they think they have depth, just exactly what you have mentioned, especially with Sydney missing a couple of players. So they're really looking forward to the test. All right. It's going to be interesting. You're lucky. We're getting the wind up here, which means <laughs> I'm not going to ask you to pick a winner. I know that that is your most hated thing to do. So we're going to move right on. I'm going to look at the Canberra Capitals against the West Coast Wave. And again, you know, we talk about must-win games. This is certainly one the Capitals can't afford to drop. But it's not going to be easy for them having to travel home after being in Bendigo two nights earlier. I know, again, it's that, that fixturing and there's always questions around it. But that just makes it more of a challenge. But certainly Campbell will have... Uh Capitals will have to be on their best game mm. to beat West Coast. Yeah, absolutely, they will be. Now, the final game is what we've just spoken to Jenna about. Six o'clock at the Veneto Club. If you're in Melbourne, get along. Let's try and pack out the Veneto Club. It will be a thriller, I reckon. The Bullion Boomers and the Dandenong Rangers, a must-win game for the Boomers. Uh, sorry, for the Rangers, having dropped that one in devastating circumstances a couple of weeks ago. And it was feisty, so I can't yeah. see this being any less than that last game. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the coaches make their adjustments in this one. Yep. All right. Well, that's about all we've got time for here on WNBLI TV. It just, it just flies along, doesn't it? <laughs> it does, not it was great to have Jenna in. It was great to see the Adelaide girls um, yeah. giving us some of their best work um, off the court. Yeah, well, we haven't had a lot of time today to get into the viewer questions, but make sure you do get in contact with us. Again, on Facebook and also on Twitter, the WNBL is up on YouTube where you can see us every single week as well as some game footage, and make sure you stay in contact with the competition as much as you can, Laurie. It's been a pleasure. Looking forward to next week. Thanks, Darren. All right, thanks to everyone at home as well. We Again, thank you for your company on ITV. We look forward to being with you next week.